Uh, so I'm going to start off the, the session of talks with an app that is actually very much on the basis, as uh, Barry put it, that connects infrastructure and, and cytoscape. Um, so why did it start the work on this uh, 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 app? And further is there are certain limitations if you, do, if you work as a normal user on your desktop machine. Uh, on, with, uh, with Cytoscape. Uh, please keep in mind that the y-axis, the number of edges, is in log 10. So it is, with, I'm talking about relative large networks, which most of them are derived from the SNAP network collection uh, as just examples. So the green ones, well, as said, they are mostly fine. Uh, the Ego Facebook network is about 4,000 nodes and 88,000 edges. The orange ones, they become in the range where you can open them on the desktop but don't expect much to do with them because it's simply you've reached the boundaries of what your memory can support and what is usable in Cytoscape. And the red ones uh, are examples of networks that are just too big to, to handle on your notebook in Cytoscape. Uh, the BioDB is one example that I need to point out. This is actually a collection out of string, various microRNA targeting uh, databases and uh, transcription factor targeting databases. So for those that don't know, which probably are the most, Neo4j is a, a dedicated database developed to store a graph. Uh, it is primarily used through a REST API, but you can also have a direct uh, Java access directly from Java as an embedded uh, object essentially in your program. Um, interesting part is the Cypher query language, which is uh, SQL inspired uh, pr yeah, query language to access the, and navigate the graph. That is, allows you to quite easily define statements like I want to go from node A, which is a micron A, to its gene targets. And from those targets, I would like also to go to which regulators, actually other regulators regulate this, these genes targeted by my microRNA of interest. Uh, and an important point that I'm also going to use heavily or use heavily in this work is you can add plugins to a Neo4j server pretty easily to extend uh, functionality, which then becomes exposed via the REST API. So pretty seamless. So why this the work? So from a biological use case, I'm embedded in a lab that does a lot of work on heart failure and another lab that is, uh, focuses on liver failures. So the practical question is, I have many different networks that depending on the question asked or on the project that I'm working on, uh, with a wide set of what the nodes can actually be. This goes from the typical proteins and genes, microRNAs, but also to things like clinical readouts or diseases. Uh, and the edges can come from everywhere. Normal, typical string, for instance, protein, protein interactions, microRNA targeted, but also things known associations, which, you know, everyone, oh yeah, this gene is associated with cancer, this gene with this type of cancer and so on, or things that I read. So when you pass through an article and say, okay, I read out this metabolite has a positive uh, or has a connection to this and this disease, things like this. So all kinds of uh, how sure you are about the information or how uh, the edge. Um, and most of these networks are pretty big in the, be uh, in the beginning and then often get through uh, uh, either further algorithms or um, just selections by me uh, cut down in size. So the BioNetDB uh, that I noticed is such a network and houses about 1.2 million edges. But still, I want to ask these networks questions and that's, for instance, where Cypher comes into place to, to allow me to formulate a question that then gets efficiently uh, executed on these large graphs and return me uh, the result. From a more technical standpoint, why did, what it, this app does is the idea is to move computation from the desktop client seamlessly to a server. Well, with the benefits of I can work with a larger graph and I can use the performance available on that server to increase my computation speeds. And then the second part would be to retrieve subgraphs from Neo4j from such a database, then visualize and further work with them on in Cytoscape. And as said, as Barry mentioned, an example, for instance, this could be one of the examples for the Cytoscape uh, cyber infrastructure. So just visually, the two use cases, um, the two big use cases, 
you have a network inside of Scape and on the Neo4j server. It's the same network, and you can do some functionality on both. And one point would be the calculation on the server is quicker than on the, uh, on the client. I actually later show you uh, an in numbers example for that. Uh, and the second example would be I have a network that is really big that you can't work with in Cytoscape, but you can do some calculations on the server side, store the results of these calculations in the graph, and then extract via Cypher queries or other functionalities that you can add uh, subnetworks that you then deal with and then you analyze and visualize, which Neo4j is pretty terrible at visualization. It doesn't make that pretty pictures especially not if there are more than 50 edges, uh, 50 objects. So just to run you through a quick workflow, the idea of this app is to be really, you shouldn't notice it that much. So you just connect to a server. Uh, in this case, it uses the REST API as said, so you just provide it the endpoint. It checks if at that endpoint is an actual Neo4j server. Then you can synchronize, meaning up or download uh, the network if you have a local one that you want to upload or if you want to get uh, the, big, the complete one from the server side. You just download the, the network and then you have it and then it's synchronized in between so the server knows what node is what node on the client and vice versa. Uh, and the next example would be, uh, this is just a simple example of uh, visualization, uh, a layering algorithm a force atlas 2 algorithm it does stepwise uh, iterations all the computation is moved on, is done on the server and every few steps uh, the server sends your uh, a result the client the cytoscape updates the visualization does the next batch and so on and so on and allows for the user to directly uh, adjust or work with it so the, i have a set of plugins as part of the project so far implemented uh, the network analyzer as it is in Cytoscape to move ex practically the same thing onto the server side so I can get all these calculations done. Uh, and then two small simple layouts as examples. The Force Atlas 2 is a more complicated layout. Uh, it's not available as it is in Cytoscape, but there would be a, a version in Gephi. Um, and a plugin that allows you to execute Cypher queries that return you a graph and which you then get as, an, as a network in, in Cytoscape to work with. Uh, just an example on the performance, uh, the Facebook net, the Ego Facebook graph is about 4,000 uh, nodes with 88,000 edges. Uh, I'm running in the network analyzer it on my notebook, so on a 2001 uh, MacBook Pro, 4 gigs of RAM, uh, with an old school hard drive. And so what you see is in Cytoscape, it takes you about to calculate uh, the whole network 3,000 seconds, which the num those two numbers are wrong. <laughs> uh, the per node time is about 700 uh, milliseconds, and if you do the same inside of Scape, you, well, the per node time is about half of it, but the full network time, because I can easily multi-thread the cal calculation on my server, is uh, significant, well, the overall time is cut significantly short and the CPU usage the other way around. So you get a full, the MacBook is quite not happy with running <laughs> at 300%. Um, Neo4j is open source and there's a community edition available, but there's a company behind them and they offer an enterprise edition, which, well, has up to 30% in early measurements, uh, fast computation. One example is also if I run for instance, the Neo4j server on a computer at home, on a, um, a more powerful computer than my net notebook, I can cut this down to even uh, to about 300 uh, seconds calculation time. So where can you get that app? Uh, currently, it's not in the App Store yet because there is qu it works, but there are some things that I want to, to add to it uh, still to integrate it better, the idea of it being a service provider to Cytoscape. The app you can get on GitHub uh, at, my, at my account and the Neo4j plugins that you need to put into the Neo4j server, you can get there as well. For the future, Cypher uh, functionality, there's always some more little things that you can add to. Uh, more plugins that do computations, for instance, uh, of later talks, they use algorithms, those could be moved to the Neo4j site 
and then uh, used on, on the server. Uh, performance, there's many ways how to explore it to increase it. For instance, really doing a full-blown clustering environment uh, and exposing the Neo4j API to, to Cytoscape. Uh, some acknowledgments, and most importantly, uh, my Google Summer of Code Mentors, Barry, uh, Kay, and Thomas. Uh, my supervision at Maastricht University at TNO, where I'm a PhD student, and at Edge where, well, I also get more supervision from. So if you have any questions.